us. The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President. Mr. President, Heads of State and Government, Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I wish to thank the General Assembly for the honor bestowed on the government and people of Nigeria by electing our national, His Excellency Tijani Muhammad Bandi to the presidency of the 74th session of this august body. This is indeed a great honor to our country. Nigerians are truly grateful and shall endeavor to live up to the expectations and the responsibilities thrust upon us. Ambassador Mohammed Bandi is an experienced and seasoned diplomat, and I am confident that he will prove to the international community his suitability for this most demanding assignment. Let me also offer my sincere thanks to the outgoing President, Her Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa Carres, for her skill, resourcefulness, and endless reservoir of patience in piloting the 73rd General Assembly. In the same vein, may I commend the Secretary General, His Excellency Antonio Guterres, for his tremendous energy, his genuine international outlook exhibited by his leadership of the United Nations. Your Excellency's delegates, the theme of the current General Assembly is galvanizing multilateral efforts for poverty eradication, quality education, climate action, and inclusion. These are the prime areas calling for collective action which will benefit national and global interests. Today, the world is at a critical juncture. This year marks the first anniversary of the International Day of Multilateralism and Diplomacy for Peace. This year also marks the 100 years of the funding of the League of Nations, leading eventually to the establishment of the United Nations as a part of the post-war World War II international order. Article 1, Paragraph 4 of the United Nations Charter called for harmonizing the actions of nations in the attainment of common ends. These common ends include A, international peace and security, B, prosperity and social justice, C, respect for human dignity, and D, protection of environment. Multilateralism, symbolized by the United Nations system, has brought immense benefit to the people of the world. It has saved lives, prevented wars, restored peace and stability, as well as generated economic and social progress in many countries. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, we must admit that as the world grows richer, there are regrettable signals in the world economic and political order. Millions in Africa and around the world remain in abject poverty. Furthermore, we are witnessing a backlash against multilateralism in the shape of a rising tide of racism, xenophobia, resurgent nationalism, populism, and tendencies towards protectionism 
and unilateralism, the pristine principle of the United Nations, I fear are threatened. On cessation of hostilities after World War II, the United, Nation, the United States, in one of the greatest selfless undertakings in history, decided to revive Europe through the Marshall Plan and uplift and restore Japan economically. This generous policy catalyzed a great economic revival globally. This action of the United States not only benefited Europe and Japan, but the United States as well through vastly improved trade and cross-investment. The United States and Europe have become friends and allies since the end of the war. The United States and Japan also become friends and allies. This example can be replicated with respect to Africa. A developed Africa will not be antagonistic to industrialized countries, but will become friends and partners in prosperity, security, and development. A prosperous Africa will mean greater prosperity for the rest of the world. A poor Africa will be a drag on the rest of the world. Is this what the international community want? A coordinated multilateral effort should be set in motion to utilize and maximize the use of the enormous resources on the African continent for the benefit of all nations. Investing partners will be able to recoup their investment uniform over time. Current attempts to help develop Africa by industrial countries are uncoordinated and plainly incremental. We have the skills, the manpower, and the natural resources but in many instances, we lack the capital. Hence my plea for industrial countries to take a long-term view of Africa. We request you to come and partner with us to develop the continent for the benefit of all. Africa charges you with the singular task of initiating the effort we are calling for. The United Nations has in place processes for promoting collective action to combat global threats. No threat is more potent than poverty and exclusion. They are the foul source from which common criminality, insurgency, cross-border crimes, human trafficking, and its terrible consequences draw their inspiration. Poverty in all its manifestations remain one of the greatest challenges facing our world. Its eradication is an indispensable requirement for achieving sustainable development. In this regard, Nigeria has developed a national social investment program, a pro-poor scheme that targets the poorest and most vulnerable households in the country. Under this initiative, easy access to financial services are facilitated to traders, artisans, market women, and cooperative societies. This type of initiative can help lessen and eventually eliminate mass poverty in Africa. At the core of our efforts to build an inclusive society, our programs are focused on youth and women empowerment. These programs aim at ensuring women and youth participation in governance, industry, climate action, and agriculture. On the international scene, Mr. President, the United Nations has new opportunities to take the lead on issues that continue to cloud the prospect for international peace, prosperity, namely the right of the Palestinian people to have their own country free of occupation. The international community has spoken from Resolution 242 of 1967 to the present today on the rights of Palestinian people to have and live in peace in their own land. The risks associated with nuclear proliferation and unfair and just trading practices notwithstanding the World Trade Organization rules and precepts. The looming danger of climate change. On climate change, Nigeria stands resolutely 
with the international community in observing agreed carbon emission targets, which I signed in 2015. We have since issued two sovereign great bonds and have added an additional 1 million hectares of forested land, taking our total forest coverage to 6.7% through collective national effort. As we advocate and strive for inclusion within our societies, we must also ensure inclusion free bills in our collective action as members of international community. That is why we support the expansion of the Security Council to reflect the diversity and dynamics of the 21st century. Mr. President, Your Excellency, from Asia to the Middle East, Africa to South America, violence and the threat of conflict continue to flight the lives of too many people. Our own country is no exception. Nigeria is a nation of nearly 200 million people of diverse groups. Our diversity is our source of strength, which is why in the election this year, our people back the policies of tolerance, inclusion, and community over the politics of protest and division. Our election promises emphasized political stability, freedom and prosperity, tackling poverty, schooling our young and providing them with the tools to build better lives. We are placing special emphasis on the role of women in our female gender advancement programs. Our progress and delivery are deliberate, purposeful, and, and measured. We clearly appreciate there are no quick fixes to complex challenges. In particular, the challenge of education in Africa is enormous. On December 3, 2018, the General Assembly adopted Resolution 73 stroke 25 that claimed 24 January of every year as International Day of Education. The resolution, which was spearheaded by Nigeria and co-sponsored by 58 other member states, marked a watershed in the recognition of the fundamental role of education in building modern societies. To ensure access to education for all, our government has introduced the homegrown feeding program to address the challenges of out-of-school and forced out-of-school children. This social intervention program, Mr. President, is aimed at encouraging increased school enrollment through provision of free school meals. The benefits extend beyond the school environment. In addition, we have introduced mainstream and implementation of school declaration laws and policies across all educational institutions in Nigeria. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, the world was shocked and settled by the massacre in New Zealand by a lone gunman taking the lives of 50 worshippers. This and similar crimes, which had been fueled by social media networks, risk seeping into the fabric of an emerging digital culture. Major technical companies must be alive to their responsibilities. They cannot be allowed to continue to facilitate the separate of religious, racist, xenophobic, and false messages capable of inciting whole communities against each other, leading to loss of many lives. This, this could tear some countries apart. Organized criminal networks, often acting with impunity across international borders, present new challenges where only collective action action can deliver genuine results. This is true in the battle against violent extremism, against trafficking in people and drugs, and against corruption and money laundering. The present Nigerian government is facing the challenges of corruption head on. We are giving notice to international criminal groups by the vigorous prosecution of the fee and ID scam attempting to cheat Nigeria of billions of dollars. <laughs> Mr. President, Your Excellencies, as a young man, as a soldier, 
I witnessed at first hand the terrible legacy of destruction and broken lives that conflict leaves in its wake. At the age of 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War approaches, I wish to pay tribute to the sacrifices made by so many millions across the globe in defense of freedom, tolerance, and the rule of law. In Nigeria, we have made significant strides to put our own house in order. We will work tirelessly to afford due process. The rule of law remains a permanent and changing foundation of the world order. Freedom, tolerance, and rule of law are universal values and undermine the best that this generation assembly, this general assembly represents, and that binds us all. Mr. President, I will conclude by remarks reaffirming Nigeria's commitment to promoting international peace and security and sustainable development. We are also committed to strengthening partnership and cooperation with international and regional organizations for the benefit of humanity. Thank you very much. On, on behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank President Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet Mr. President.